H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So what you have learned is we have different types of variables and you can define that. So suppose age equals to bio, but you can define that and name equals to Rishi or whatever to build. Okay, so this is oops. double quotes. So, so when you uh, have variables like that, we also saw that we have different types of variables. Right? I have a simple int and then you can specify it. And I can say float int. Okay. I can say 10.2 and then I can have a complex int or complex number I'll say. Okay, so this is not float end that is uh, ridiculously ridiculous contradiction. I'll say number. So float number, uh, complex number can have a j in it and you can define like 10 plus 50 j. So you can actually have the complex number also. Okay, so how do you identify whether this is a complex number because sometimes you're gonna keep changing the type of this variable along with the flow of the program that is completely possible. So you can always check type with the help of type. So type. Okay, and then pass what exact variable you're talking about. So simple int. And if I run this code, I will get the type of this particular uh, variable, which is, you know, that. So, which is Pythorin, which is class int. So, this particular variable follows the class integer. And we can use this type methodology for other variables also. So, we can use it for float. We can use it for complex. So, any other uh, type of variables you want to get to know. And you can use it for string also, by the way. So type of name, right? And then if you execute this, you will get to know the types of these classes. So one is first is integer, second is float, third is complex, and the fourth one is string. So you will get to know about the type of the variable as, so this is something like implicit for you. Uh, so programming language is defining the type internally. So that's why type function is provided to you to identify which type the variable is actually holding, okay? So now you can see this integer, float, complex, and string, which is printed for this variable. So remember that the variable can change their values. So I can change the simple int to 10.2. I can change the age to, and as we already did there, so change the type, you can do that. So age equals, and then you can actually assign something here. So if you do that, of course, I will print it later and check the type again. It's gonna no change. Of course, I am not ch checking the type of name or uh, age there. So I'll add so I'm checking a type here and checking a type here. It's gonna change. Okay, so that is something which is you understand this. Good with it. Any questions? There is a, a way to write scientific variables also. I don't have an example here, but I can tell you that we use that. So that is called e raised to the power. So, uh, or we use this scientific variables like, okay, let me show you. So, sapphire was. Okay, and then you have like 32E4. Okay, this is also a float type. Okay, so we are using this kind of variables which are float in type. Okay, in scientific community, there is specific meaning to this, right? Cypher so was, and then if you run this, you're gonna get float out of it. 
Oops, I have out of it. So see here, it's 32 into 10 raised to the power 4. This is what exactly it means. Okay. So and if I see the type of that, you can see that from the variable itself, the value of the variable itself, that it is basically a float variable. Right? So check that and it's gonna be a float. Good method. So that is a scientific variable. Okay, rarely used, but we should know about it. That's why we added that. But now let's come to the point of casting. So remember when we are printing, okay, so and uh, in the last session, what I did is I just appended one integer to a string and then we got an error. So sometimes. And I promised you that we're going to cover that today. So this is what it is. So this is... Uh, integer and then we printed this as it is and what happened actually we got a error Let's see that oh age is string now so simple right okay so what exactly happened here is uh, unlike other programming languages especially java it is not automatically parse the stuff for you okay it will not convert something into uh, something into a string for you and print actually needs uh, something in string so how do you parse the stuff so remember it's it's parsing is really easy in python so in python you can parse anything to anything frankly speaking so now let's say you have an integer you want to parse into float or vice versa you can do that with the help of certain functions so you have int function okay which is parsing into integer you have float parse uh, uh, like float function which is parsing into float and str which is parsing into string then which is str is really common because we will be using that for printing uh, the stuff along with the other strings okay so uh, let's test this stuff okay real quick i'm creating another thunder model i am saying parsing we'll keep three types of variables here Let's say int var and have 100 here. Let's say float var. Have 100, 200 or 100.24. And we will keep a string as well. So let's say str var. Okay, and then we'll keep again. Right? And then we'll try to convert that. Okay. So first thing we will do is we will convert that uh, for convert integer sorry convert float into integer. Okay, that will be easy. So um, float to integer and then it will be like int function where you pass your float value. Okay, and try to print this. This, and then you will be able to see the value which is an integer so this is integer parsing right so you're gonna get 100 out of it and whatever after decimal point is not considered right you can do reverse also like say int to float and then you pass it to float pass this value Right? and then try to print it print int to float right? and it will be 100.0 so now this variable will be considered as float okay you are converting your pass in those values and finally uh, whenever we are printing other types of variables we can parse it into string so passing str is really common okay so now let's go ahead and add pass str parse. So int to str that is string and then you have function str and pass the int value. Although you will not be able to see any difference because anyway uh, even if you are printing that nothing gonna happen. Okay, there is no change in the variable right. 
so it will not be any change in printing although what we can do now let me run this what we can do now we can actually add some text so this is digital right and you will be able to see the error now you are not able to you will not be able to get the error now but you should not get it because you are converting it anyway into a string and you can do that for float also so float to string and str function although we generally don't do that we can directly write str into our here okay we don't add an additional step of parsing and then printing later okay we don't do that we directly print it right there so print Remember, the, this double colon which I add is just for separation. It has no meaning in any of the programming languages. Okay, and you got the float. Any confusion? Any doubt? Any issues? All good. Is parsing easy? Right. So basically, you parse to one entity into another entity with the help of functions, which are exactly same name as their types. Okay, so the functions are same. So this is a constructor basically so we are using constructor of this particular class okay so we're gonna see what exactly constructor means okay what is class means that is another part of the course okay while going along we're gonna learn all those things okay. so let's understand python string a little bit so python strings okay so this is parsing so i'm closing this class and then we are learning the next one which is python strings So whenever you declare a python string it is actually a array okay so a string literals in python is surrounded by either a single quotation mark or double quotation mark string in python are arrays of bytes representing a unicode character what does that really mean so we will see that so now when i say message equals you can put hello world okay so basically, or you can say no message. Hola. So all these basically uh, strings are nothing but a set of Unicode characters. You can declare that with the quotes, single quotes or double quotes. No problem with that. But now it is an array of Unicode. What does that mean? What is an array, by the way? Array is a set of a similar uh type of variables okay so when i'm saying that um, a string is an array of unicode characters that means basically what we are doing is we are making this hello world as so this hello world is basically nothing but you have a different positions it's position starting from zero so how do you write it you will say that position zero I have H in position E, I have uh, sorry, position 2, I have E. So it will be uh, written in kind of an Excel format. So let me start my notepad real quick. So the uh, hello world which I wrote here for an array, it will be written like 0. Then at position 1, you have E. Then at position 2, you have L. Position 3, you have L. Position 4, you have O. So this is how it will be written. So this is basically an array. Array is a collection of similar entities okay, tied up together. So in Python, every string is a set of or is an array of characters array of unicode characters okay so here hello world is represented in similar way so you can actually access this particular array elements with the help of these indexes so this is called as an index of this particular uh, unicode character okay so let me complete this real quick so we will be able to understand what exactly we are doing here so here and 
finally you have 9. The index always starts with 0. So this is index and this is string. Okay, index always starts with 0. Okay, no exceptions. Index starts. So can I print? So if I am making this as a message, so can I print a zero index? So you can just specify a message of zero, then you will be printing this particular element H. Okay, so I see that. So here there is hello world is basically <coughs> print A1. Okay, so print A1 will be printing E. 